Oh yeah, we're all right. Everyone good on this lovely day, 7th of July. Uh, welcome to my kitchen, Ian, doing a bit of tea at three. Hope we're all very well. Um, it's a very exciting day, um, if you've been with me. for this is, I think this is episode 24. Um, just make my tea. Episode 24, and um, for episode 25, um, I think my hair's going to be shorter. I'm having a haircut. Um, so this is the last time. So uh, last time the hair's going to be like this. Should I keep it long? Should I uh, take it all off? That's the question. Um, it's very long. All right, Gemma. It's good. Anyway, got a nice cup of tea. Action Man mask. And Action Man mask. Mask. Action Man mug. Um, very definitely. And I've got a lovely chocolate biscuits. Happy days. Chocolate digestive. Um, some of you will remember that chocolate digestive, a very popular biscuit in the UK, if you've been following my questions. But we need a question. We obviously need a question today. I've been doing my research. I've done lots of tea. I've done lots of biscuits. All this kind of stuff. So I'm doing cake today. And um, my question today, and there's loads of surveys, but I can't remember which one I've gone for. It's not like a good food survey or something like that. But what I want to know is um, what is Britain's favourite cake? So this isn't based on sales or anything. This is just what is Britain's favourite cake? So a poll of cakes. What is Britain's favourite cake? Now I've got the top 10. So, you know, you can have a few guesses and we'll see if we can get all of the top 10. But what is Britain's favourite cake? So, you know, that's the kind of, uh, that's the question. So type away, what do you think Britain's favourite cake is? If you're uncertain, just email Peter Fisher. Um, early guest there, Victoria Sponge. Victoria Sponge chocolate cake. Uh, so, uh, so we've got a few guesses, which is nice. Uh, I'm a bit of a cake aficionado. Chocolate Victoria Sponge. Wow, there we are. So we've got some early guesses, so keep them coming. You can keep guessing, because um, I'll give you the top 10 at the end. I'll give you the top 10, so you can keep pumping them in, um, and that'll be absolutely fine. Um, but today, what we're going to talk about is managing upwards. I'm just going to do a, a little bit of time on that, managing upwards. Um, managing upwards, influencing upwards, that sort of thing. How to, a lot of people kind of struggle with this. Uh, a, a boss that maybe they think they can't approach, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to kind of come up with a, with a few tips. So if anybody's just joining, what's Britain's favourite cake? What's Britain's favourite cake? I've got the top 10. So the first thing um, I'm going to give, uh, I was just whapping out cakes regularly here. Um, so uh, the first little tip I'm going to give is um, don't sit on any bad news. So if something's gone wrong, um, then don't be afraid to uh, let your boss know. Um, it's kind of like, you know, when you're a kid, I, I was like, maybe this was just me as a kid. But if I did something wrong, then I kind of didn't want to tell my parents. And I thought, they'll never find out. And of course they did. And then it was like a nightmare. And I think sometimes some people have the same kind of relationship with their boss. They think they're going to, you know, they're going to be disciplined or something's not going to be right. So if something doesn't go right, just let your boss know. That's the best thing. Um, second, second thing I'll give is um, a tip that I always give to a lot of bosses is I kind of say, I'd say I always ask you people how you want to manage them. How, how do they think they're going to work best? Um, how do they want to be managed? And I think we can spin that around on its head. You know, don't be afraid to let your boss know how you work best. What is it you look for? And that will kind of create the two-way channel that we're going to that we're going to try and um, bring forward. But you know, let them know. You know, what kind of conversations do you want to have? How regular do you want to have them? How do you want to keep in touch? So, how do you spring best into life? Now, a lot of people say, "I'll oh, just leave me alone. I'll get on with it." But generally, we like more com we like more contact with our boss than that. But let them know how you work best. Uh, now, your boss, they are your superior generally. Um, but sorry, they are your senior generally, but they're not your superior. So you'll bring lots of things to the party and a good boss will have a lot of good people around them. So I think it's important as well for people to, to for you to demonstrate what you're good at and where your strengths lie. And that's not about arrogance. That is, that is about showing your boss what you can do. Simple thing we do at the start, get the small things right. There's a lot of things. And, and some of this I've seen, never mind your business, I've seen this outside. You know, simple things like the right attitude. That's you, you don't. That, that's just something you can bring every day. Uh, but we can get a little things right about promptness of, of replies, politeness, doing what you say you're going to do. These are very simple things to commit to and to achieve. And I think that that will influence your boss if you get those little things right. You know, things like emails. Just answer the email promptly. That's not immediately. That's promptly. And and you'll probably have a. Um, 
some kind of uh, rules or, or service levels within your business. But stick to those. Get those things right. And, you know, even things like um, spell checks and stuff like that, all of those things, those little simple things can, can get it right. Um, get a timing right. And particularly at, at this point of view, if, you, if you're going to try and influence your boss or change your boss's mind, think about the current situation. What's the energy like in and around the business at the moment? How receptive is it to, to new ideas, a different thing, a challenge to what's already there? So you've got to pick your timing. And we'd say that for, for any kind of influencing scenario, but very much if you're trying to go up with your boss. So what are they? What else? Well, with your boss, tailor the pitch to them. Um, so what is their key focus? Um, build it around um, the, the things that are important to them. So if it's, if it's about innovate, if they work in the innovation space, then make sure we're talking about new, we're talking about exciting, we're talking about different. These are words that are going to impact on them a lot more. One step higher than that, we then have to link it to business goals as well. So we tailor to the individual, but it's clean, like, clear line of sight into the business. If anybody's just joining, I'm looking for Britain's favourite cake, so don't be afraid to type those in. Keep guessing. Um, check your emotions. Uh, don't let your emotions uh, run wild, uh, particularly if an idea gets uh, uh, rejected or people disagree with it. Um, I spoke about emotional intelligence on an earlier session, but what we want you to do is respond, not react. So always get a filter in and think, how am I going to react, even facially as well as verbally? Um, involve others, so build a coalition for your ideas. If you can get more than one person on board with you, it will have greater impact. The more people to do it, the more people want to do something. Um, and we see this time and time again. It's, it's how um, clothes are sold. It's how ideas are sold. So if one person does it, somebody else wants to do it. Um, and and that, that level of influence has, has gone across for years to come. And that's why, you know, we probably all know somebody who said they'd never have a mobile phone and everyone's got a mobile phone now. And, and you know, that's because everybody wanted one because everybody had one. So it gets to a tipping point, everybody does it. Um, think about the communication styles. I spoke about this, um, this was running at work week, which we go back to um, session I think it was 12 and 13. Spoke specifically about communication styles. Understand how your boss likes to communicate and use that style for maximum impact. So if they're very direct, fact-focused, use facts. Um, if it's about speed, then go with speed. If it's about excitement and energy, then utilize that. But work out how they communicate. And, and you know, in business, we're using so many tools like Maya Briggs, we're using Insights, we're using ROB. All of those things, they give us clues. So find out about your boss, research your boss, um, and go for solutions. And always look for a solution um, I, th I think there's a lot of people um, in business who can clearly see that something's not working. But very few people come in with a solution. And uh, a guy I did some work with um, a, f a few years ago had a big post on his wall, but a post some training we'd done with them. And uh, he said, if you bring me a, a, a problem, please bring me at least one solution. And he said, one, it's reduced the amount of people who actually come into my room. But two, it's given people that level of empowerment that they will come up with their own solutions. Now, sometimes you're still going to have to go into the boss, which is fine. But if you go into a solution focused, you're much more likely to win yourself a hearing. Next, um, learn, take some feedback. Seek feedback and learn how to receive it. And, um, and that will help you grow, just become a better person. So that the whole response, that respond, don't react to feedback. But ask your boss for feedback. Um, that will show an openness and a willing to, willingness to improve. If your boss isn't giving you specific feedback, ask them for that. So if they say you've done a great job, again, can you tell me specifically what I've done? Because then I'll be able to repeat it. So it's those kind of things. I think that shows a lot of ownership as well. Uh, and, you know, find out what's important to them. I said that, understand them as a boss. Find out what's important to you. Now, the last couple of little things I've got is um, good influencing things. Um, we can influence like, on feelings and facts. And um, four words I'm going to put in. Um, from a feelings point of view, reflect and assert. So reflection is about listening to what somebody else is saying. And asserting is stating your needs and wants and desires. So we can reflect. So don't only listen to the words that have been said, but listen to the emotions that they're conveying and the intention of what they're asking for. So that's the first thing. We reflect and we assert. The second part of influencing is, is around about facts. And we do that through questioning. Um, we do that through questioning. And we also do that through suggesting. 
So a little bit of um, fact finding. Um, we propose and suggest. Those are the kind of things that we look for. So we suggest, we say, this is what I believe. This is what I think. I can see this working. Yeah. And then obviously that question, we use not only open, closed, probing questions, high gain questions. What are the three things you want to see out of this? So essentially, on, on, if we're trying to influence somebody there, we would reflect and question at the start, understand somebody else's needs and clarify and make sure we have a firm understanding of what we're trying to achieve. And then we try and move things through to closing through assertiveness or asserting and suggesting. That way we're taking, um, we're taking stock of both um, facts and feelings. Build those two things together and you have a chance of influencing upwards. Um, your boss, in, in, in kind of close, your boss is, is just a person. Um, and it doesn't matter about a ranking. Bosses don't have um, all the great ideas. They need the people beyond them as well. Now, I've said this on a couple of other things, that, that, that we have a, a huge array of, of um, generations at work at the moment. So, you know, that, that's what we need. We need ideas to come from all of these different people. But if you can package it, show that you've listened, you've understood, and you start providing a solution, that's going to give you your best chance of success. So there's a few things to think about. Um, what, we're going to, what I'm going to introduce on um, Thursday, it's kind of linked in a little bit with that, but it's, um, it's, it's a real thing that's, that's very important at the moment and one of the key skills needed as we, as we rise out of lockdown, and that's working collaboratively. So what I'm going to talk about on Thursday is just some tips from how, how we can work collaboratively. So that's where we're going to go there. Now, what are those top 10 cakes? Um, and and we, we have got, we've got a few up there, actually. I've got my list here, actually, so I'll just bring that down there. Uh, but Clara did get the number one cake, and it is lemon drizzle cake. That was number one cake. I've got no idea what Crofto is. I'm very disappointed. If somebody could email him, that would be very helpful. Um, so lemon drizzle cake is number one. Number two, uh, we've got a few chocolates up there, but it's chocolate fudge cake specifically. Number three is carrot cake. So I see that up there. So we've kind of got the three. Number four is the, the uh, chocolate brownie. Um, number five is the Victoria sponge, the good classic Victoria sponge. Um, then we've got a chocolate muffin. And then we've got a sticky toffee cake, which I kind of think is a pudding, but a sticky toffee. Sticky toffee cake, does anybody have that? Um, then there's coffee and walnut. Not a favourite of mine, coffee cake. Um, Black Forest Gatto number nine, and slipping at number 10 was the Blueberry Muffy. Brownie is not a cake. I don't think Sticky Toffee's a cake either, you know. I think maybe that's that. We'll have to go offline, Flora. What did define a cake? Um, but there we go. It's it's a whole host of news. Lemon Drizzle, Britain's number one cake. Go and cut yourself, uh, go and cut yourself a slice. I'm going to have a lovely chocolate digestive, Britain's number one biscuit. Um, enjoy, and I'll see you Thursday. Thanks for being there.